Hi everyone, thanks for joining me on my YouTube channel. This is Workshop Quick Takes. Today on Project XJ, we're going to review just about everything you can do to an XJ's instrument cluster for the 97-01. What started out was an innocent little LED conversion grew into a whole lot more and we ended up doing a full refurbishment on a replacement cluster and swapping over our miles the hardware way. Now we have to admit we didn't come up with all the ideas we're going to show today on our own. There were a couple other YouTube videos we found that were really, really helpful for some of this and we'll put those down in the show notes. Want to see what we did? Let's step out to the car and begin with what we have to do in order to get to the instrument cluster, take apart the dash. Fortunately, or unfortunately if your vehicle's ever been broken into and rifled through, it's really easy to take apart the dash. Make sure your foot is firmly on the brake. Helps to have the e-brake up if you don't already. And then I usually like to reach down here and pull from the bottom and the whole panel comes loose. The screws we're going to need to get out to remove this whole face piece are here, 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 and here. Before we go any further and get ourselves in trouble, let's go ahead and put it back in park and just pull the key because for the moment, we're done here. Next we need to remove this lower plastic piece and there are three screws along here. Those should also all be Phillips except for the fact that we've had one strip out over here so it's been replaced with something different. This panel then has a couple push-in type clips here and over here. And that and that is what we just removed. Now that we've gotten here, we've got this steel kick panel to remove. That has a screw there and a screw here. And then it just drops from the bottom because there's a pair of tabs holding it in down here and here. This will want to drop down as you release the second screw. Make sure it doesn't do that. It is a fairly hefty chunk of steel. And there we go. Getting that out of the way then gives us good access to another screw here and another screw right there, which are tied to this plastic panel. Okay, now here's where what I've got going is gonna deviate a bit from OE spec and you're gonna to have to make a decision on what you want to do. This bellows here in OE configuration is normally integrated into this piece here. And you're supposed to be able to separate it down here and then split that off and have it come off with the rest of this. The bellows is only attached to this dash plastic piece using a bunch of melt tabs and they usually break off pretty quickly. If you take this in and out more than a couple times, it's gonna break off anyway. So this here is going to remove without the bellows I'm fine with that. If you're trying to preserve your interior to exact OE spec, then this isn't what you want to do. Another bit of cheating I did is the switch. This here normally catches on the molding back here, but I took a stepper bit and just widened that hole just enough that this goes straight through. If you don't object to that, I would suggest making this one of your earliest mods. If I got everything loose correctly, this here is just about ready to pop off, and it do. And now, to work it off, I'm going to pull the steering wheel adjustment all the way down and then just do that. Another non-OE mod is back here. I have a control switch for my lights outside. And at this point, if you need to get further into the dash, this piece here actually pops up. And that's once that's off, you then have access to the airbag cover as well as these two side pieces. And combine that with removing a couple screws to drop out the uh, dash. There's a couple back here, a couple underneath, and then forward here for the airbag cover. And that pretty well gets the dash taken apart from that point forward. I'm going to go ahead and pop that up just because it makes it easier to get at a couple of these screws. So let's start with this one here. Okay, for the last one, I just push, pop this steering wheel back up. There it is. Okay, for our very last step, this here just pulls forward. There's a couple electrical connectors back there that will pop out. One of those was there, one was there. And unless things are badly damaged, those should have stayed hooked in the dash. One there and one there. Since we're not taking anything else apart today, that's as far as we go. Okay, let's take a quick look at the product we're working with here. This here is the LEDs I've been using. They're basically a direct replacement for this. But I've been having trouble with these not lasting very long. It seems like they really just want to burn out. So. These last plenty of long time, of course, but eventually they go too, and they have kind of a warm white color and then a little blue cap on them that's supposed to tint them, and let's just see if we can do it better. So let's take a look at these. These are available on Amazon now in these and other colors. Ice is kind of like a medium blue, not a like full blue. And then white, of course, is your standard medium white, I think. The actual dyes on the cool white one 
are very yellow looking because of the phosphor blend. The ice ones over here, I see a slight bit of tinting, but I'm not sure if that's even affecting the color at all or if it's being entirely done in the semiconductor level. They do come with these instrument cluster style mounting points. I do see positive and negative on here, so I have a feeling these are unidirectional, which means you'll have to flip them around if they don't work on the first try. And they are, so ice blue it is. Three different LED packs, one on top and two on the sides. You should put out a lot of light back there. Here's white, same thing again, with the positive mark on there. So yeah, that's kind of like a, a medium cool white. I like that too. That's what we're gonna work with. Again, got these both on Amazon. I'm sure they're on eBay and everywhere else by now, but these are a definite improvement on some of these older style ones like this. Hopefully the uh, resistor is set so that they have a decently long life, but there's only one way to find out. Now there's a whole lot of small indicator lights that you could be replacing. I'm not going to mess with those for now because I don't have any that are not working. What I do have though is one, two, three, four, five that are responsible for lighting. And I've previously LED converted these, although this one's gone bad again. And when I did that, I went ahead and labeled positive and negative on all these. So on this one, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. Seeing a pattern? Well, you're wrong. Negative, positive. So these four go one direction, but this one randomly goes the other. I don't know why. Yeah, for a bit of a close up look is what we're dealing with. See that there's a light diffuser down inside there. Then the two terminals that make contact with. The little uh, brass pins on there. Okay, one, two, three, four, five all in. The only one's missing right here is the one that would indicate the ABS warning light. This Jeep does not have ABS, so I just removed that entirely so I can reuse the socket elsewhere. But it's now nighttime out there. So let's just take this out there, and if we turn on the headlights, we should be able to see this fully illuminate. If it doesn't, and we have any problem ones, then we'll need to bring it back in and figure out where and why. This just needs to line up with the screw holes. And when it does, you should be over the connectors. And yeah, it has kind of a little funnel thing on the back to guide it in, so. And then, yeah, once these line up, then for sure you're in. So, I'm not sure how I feel about the ice. It's a little extreme. Kind of unique, actually. It's not all bad. If I want to, I can always come back and swap it again, but I think for now, I'll just leave it that way. Well, there we have it. Just need to reassemble the dash now, put it all back together. On the other hand, as we looked at our cluster, we realized that it's just kind of tired. Plastic's pretty scratched in places. The needles no longer have any orange on them at all. And even hash marks on the fuel gauge, the voltage gauge, the speedometer. Everywhere is pretty faded looking from being in the sunlight too long. And then we found a slightly better looking one available on Marketplace. Okay, in order to use this new one, before we get much further into it, I want to go ahead and just repaint the needles. Credit to uh, someone on one of the Jeep forums that I participate in who pointed out that Hobby Lobby has this fluorescent orange paint, or I should say rather Tester's brand does. This is for model painting. For $2.69, you get more than enough paint to just do a light surface coat on your needles so that they come out bright orange again. And it shows up exactly like you'd expect at night. So to get this acrylic top off, which I think it's acrylic, polypropylene, I'm not sure. Made in Japan, the whole assembly says PP. Yeah, I think that's polypropylene. Yeah, case and cover material. I've got these little points here that need to be released, and I'm going to use plastic tools to do it because I don't want this thing splitting to bits. You know what? I'll bet if I use some popsicle sticks and wedge them in there, that would be more effective. So these two on the sides, and these up here. Yeah, because I've now got three loose spots. And then this spot over here has popped back in, so that's causing a problem there. Oh, there we go. That was not a deal, but I don't think I broke any of it, surprisingly. And that there is just a little rubber insert over the trip odometer button. Interesting. It's going to need a cleaning with some plastic polish. Let's see what we can do about these needles. Okay, yeah, they do spring return. That's what I thought they were supposed to do. So this one, this one, and this one, not a problem to repaint, but these two have this little uh, pointer stop there. So I'll need to maybe just use a little tape to hold these off the edge. And it wouldn't hurt to put a little tape under the needles as well. Again, I'm freely admitting I didn't come up with this idea. I saw this on a forum. Other people have tried it since then. It seems to work. Oh, 
And like most other endeavors in life, if you take your time on this, you'll like the results better. There we go. Now the other thing I bought along with the model paint while I was at Hobby Lobby is these little micro brushes. Yeah, little tiny bristles there on the end. And this paint tends to separate, so anytime you go to use it, always give it a good shake. Now yeah, that has a fairly nice thin consistency, which I think was the point. So let's see how it works out. Oh yeah, look at that. That is magic. Just get a thin little bead of it. So it just starts to heal up on there. That's really all it takes. Follow it up, drag it along. Okay, it's about as orange as they're getting, I think, and that's good. I'm gonna set this aside, I'm gonna put it somewhere safe. Now let's talk about this. I think, if I'm careful. Okay, so set that aside somewhere safe, and I'm now down to just this piece of plastic. This is a polishing compound, say for clear coat or whatever you're using, and it happens to have a very fine grit in it, which, along with some uh, plastic solvent, and I need to shake it, I think. It's to separate, I've noticed. And make sure that you're actually using a polishing compound and not a cutting compound or a rubbing compound because those will uh, be a little bit too aggressive. But now if I start going over the surface of this with this, again, going in circular motion so I don't leave any straight cut lines that would be visible later. And then as it dries out and starts to clear away again, should be left with a cleaner, smoother surface. And it looks like I'm getting one, so that's happiness. Then it'll just wash off the residue. Okay, you need to watch for just a minute while I finish cleaning this. So while I still have a damp paper towel, I'm going to clean off that little bit of rubber and then reinsert it. And there it is. Meanwhile, these needles are looking great. They're not 100% dry, so I don't want to start pulling tape yet. That's the refurbishment step. The other part, of course, is going to be uh, Checking the lights on the back here, but should be about ready to go test it. And then we'll swap the IC on the back side in order to transfer the mileage. We ended up applying a second coat of orange paint to the needles once the first coat was dry. And after that, the result was exactly what you'd hope for. The plastic face still had some scuffing and scratching visible in the workshop light, but in the vehicle, it's not visible. If you really wanted to deal with it, a wet sand and buff would do the trick. Okay, to split the case on the back side here, we need to be looking at these tabs along the top because this piece is going to pull out. You don't want to be loosening these tabs because if you start to remove this whole piece, the circuit board is going to come with it and then yank the needles off the front. Oh, oh boy. Fortunately, I have the backing plate off the other one. If I remove it carefully, I can swap it over. Another thing you can look at on something like this when you've got it open is to see if any of these capacitors is leaking or swelling. I don't think they run too hot up here, just normal heat from the dash, which of course is plenty, but these are KNG. I don't recognize the brand. If this thing was made in Japan in the 90s, then I guarantee these are actually decent quality capacitors, and so I'm not expecting them to be going anywhere. But the other thing we will need to look at is to pop all these lights one by one. It's laborious, but it's worth it right now. I'll try players here that I put some tape on just to avoid try cracking these things to bits. So if I just turn one of these, most of these lamps don't spend a lot of time on, so they're usually not in too bad a shape. And of course, if you know your Jeep is never going to have certain features, you can always borrow those because they've never been used. Like cruise, don't have cruise control on this. Security, never had the sentry system. So both of these are probably brand new bulbs. Seat belt, high beam, left and right turn signal. These three here get used a lot. Part-time, airbag, check gauges, check engine. Well, that one, that just gets used all the time. Am I right? And then these guys here are at the back illumination. 90s technology, these days almost all of this would be integrated in one little tiny microcontroller. All right, what I'm about to do here is probably not any less effort than simply using an EEPROM programmer, but I don't have an EEPROM programmer and I do have a soldering station and some experience with surface mount. Supplies we're definitely gonna need are this desoldering braid, this rosin paste flux, probably a little bit of solder before we're done. And I'm gonna go ahead and start by just cleaning off the iron. The way to do that is uh, just get a little fresh solder on there, wipe the sponge, should be fine there. We do need to get the rear covers off both of these, so let's just move one out of the way temporarily and focus on this one. See, this is the old one, so this one I want to try to remove very carefully. I'm hoping I can salvage 
Looks like I got them just over the lip there. So if I can hold that and do the next one, there we go. Okay, good. So that one's still completely intact. I can hopefully use that as my replacement piece on the new one. The other thing I'm gonna be pulling off the old one is a lot of these lamps. But first of all, let's focus on IC13 there. So here's another one of those mini paintbrushes that I was using to do the needles on the replacement. First, I need to melt it. Good bit of heat from the iron. So now I need this in liquid form and I need to generously apply it around both pins up here so that I can really suck that solder off without damaging the board. Next, I'm gonna use desoldering braid and this usually has a little bit of flux in it as well. And yes, it does have a Radio Shack logo. That's how long I've had this here. All right, now let's see. Move one piece. There we go. Okay. Theoretically, it's still holding my mileage. Hopefully I haven't damaged it with all that heat. Now I have to repeat that procedure. I would not recommend this as your first ever experience with surface mount soldering. Unless you've got one that you know is dead and don't care about and you wanna just practice on it, then that's a great use of it. There we go. I wanna clip that off and move to some clean stuff. It feels like it's going really quick and being wasteful, but if you want it to clean properly, this is how you do it. So it looks like they have a lot of solder sitting on them. It's just for a closer look at what we're on about there. Those pads are mostly desoldered, and now I just need to heat them again as I lift the chip off gently. Set that one over here. Okay, pads are cleaned, ready for reinstallation. Pay attention to pin one at top right. Get that flipped around, it will fry. So this one's going on to here now. Yeah, this is looking really good, apart from solder bridging. Actually pretty decent. Okay, now the way we fix all that solder bridging, once again, take the paste flux, nice and liquid. Wait for the choking fumes to dissipate. Put just a little bit up here. It will pull up on the pads, but it won't short to the others. Okay. It's not pretty, but it should work. Let that cool down on its own a bit before we hit it with the nice ice cold electronics cleaner. Oh boy. Some of that worked its way back into the plastic there. That's not what I wanted to see. Don't want to keep doing that. It can actually stain the plastic sometimes. Well, there's only one way to know for sure what just happened. We have clean connections on all eight pins, so. Mostly because I'm not sure about. this one connection right here. Good as they're gonna get, I guess. So we'll shut down in here for a minute. Take it outside and just see if it boots up the way it's supposed to. All right, here we go. So that's one, two is over here, three is down here, four is down over here. Let's take a look at it. Let's go ahead and pull the lights, hold this down, do our self check. So, I'm loving it. Finish putting everything back together tomorrow, and we've got a practically brand new looking dash cluster. If you've been following us up to here, it shouldn't surprise you to learn that the dash reassembles in the reverse order that it came out. The main trim face is reinstalled with its screws, the kick panel is reinstalled below, and then finally, the center bezel. Well, so there it is. One refurbished, cleaned up gauge cluster with nice bright orange needles and a very crisp, clear, uniform white LED backlight. Happy to have it. Got the miles swapped over. By swapping those EEPROM chips, it was a little fidgety there for a while, but thankfully I didn't destroy either of them. Both clusters work, so I've got this one and I've got a spare if I ever really need it. Hopefully that gives you some ideas on more things you can do to clean up your XJ. Customize it a bit if you want to. Make it nice, make it useful, make it yours. So, thanks for joining us again today. And we'll see you again next time, whenever that is. Has anyone seen my phone?